Hello, and welcome to Probability and Counting Techniques. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and assistant professor at Doniana Community College. We're going to see a lot of marble examples. We're going to talk all about Susie and her weird fascination with marbles. Here we go. Susie sees a bag containing four red marbles, three green marbles, two white marbles, and one purple marble. She grabs five of them. We're going to find these five probabilities. Here we go. So we have four red, three green, two white, one purple, and she's grabbing five. Before we look at the individual questions, let's see the total possibilities. Four and three make seven, plus two makes nine, plus one makes ten. We have ten marbles, and we want to grab five. The number in the sample space will be the combinations, right? Because we're looking at sets. Order doesn't matter. We have ten. We want five. Using our factorial representation of combinations, we find 252 is the number in the sample space. Now, we're going to get particular in these uh, exercises, the individual questions. Let's call them examples. In the individual examples, but always, the number in the sample space, if we have 10 marbles and we want 5, is 252. This will be our denominator for all of them. So, we're looking at the, po the probability she has all the red ones. Okay. We have 4 red. We want all four. Well, if we take out the red, there are six other marbles left. And since we want to grab five of them, we have four red, we want one of the other ones. So we'll have the combinations, the four reds that we have, comma, the four reds that we want, and then the combinations of the six marbles that are not red that we have, we want one of them right, to make our total of five. So four and six make ten. 4 and 1 make 5. They add up appropriately. The combinations of 4 things taken 4 at a time is 1. The combinations of 6 items taken 1 at a time is 6. 1 times 6 is 6. And so our probability is 6 out of 252, which we can simplify to be 1 out of 42. Our 1 out of 42 chance that we, when we grab 5 at random, we have all the red ones. What if she has none of the red ones? Well, we have four red and we want zero. This leaves six other marbles that we have and we want five of them. We want all five to be not red. So the combinations of four things taken zero at a time is one. The combinations of six things taken five at a time is six. One times six is six. Remember, go back to the factorial definition to find out, uh, to, to find those combinations, make sure I'm right. Again, 6 out of 50, uh, 252 simplifies to 1 out, of four, uh, 1 out of 42 in this particular situation, and it's not always the same, but in this situation with this setup with this bag of marbles, grabbing 5, if Susie wants all the red or if she wants none of the red, she has the same probability. So we have 10 marbles, want to grab 5. We want to look at the possibility that she has at least one white. At least one means one or more. In this case, we only have two white, so one or two white marbles. We have to consider both possibilities. First, I'm going to look at one white, and then I'm going to look at two white. Now, notice here I have four red in red, three green in green, one purple in purple, but I didn't think it would be very effective put, to put the two white marbles in white on a white background, so they look a little gray. You know, it. it I don't know. It's just the way it is. So, one white marble. The combinations of the two white marbles we have, we want one. And then, if we take out these two, there are eight other marbles that we have. We want four more, because one white one plus four others makes a total of five. Or, right, right here, at least one is one or two. So, or we add. Maybe we have two white marbles. We get both of them. We have two, we want two. And then the eight other marbles that are not white, we want three of those to make our total of five. The combinations of two things taken one at a time is two. And then, so multiply, the combinations of eight things taken four at a time is 70. Make sure you use your factorials. Make sure you use your formula. Check that out. Add to that the combinations of two things taken two at a time, which is one. And then, so multiply, 
The combinations of eight marbles taken three at a time is 56. Once again, please check my arithmetic. Make sure I did that right. 2 times 70 is 140. 1 times 56 is 56. 140 plus 56 is 196. Out of our total of 252, which makes 7 ninths. 7 ninths of the time will have 1 or 2 marbles. Now here's the interesting thing. Knowing this, I automatically know the probability that I have 0 white marbles. Right? That's the only other op option. I have one mar white marble, I have two white marbles, or I could have zero. I know the probability that I have zero white marbles. Probability of zero white will be one minus seven ninths because of our complement rule, right? At least one or none. Those are the only two things that can happen. At least one or we could have none. So together they have to add up to be one we could use subtraction in order to find the probability of a complement. That comes in handy sometimes. She has two reds and one of each other color. So we have four red, we want two. Combinations of four, we want two. And then we have three green, we want one, right? One of each other color. And then we have two, we want one. We have one, we want it. So the combinations, the C is there to remind us it's combinations. We're looking at sets. Order does not matter. So C versus P for permutations. We'll use combinations because it's at random. And then, all right, so we multiply it to get the next values. Find each of those combinations. We'll have 6 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 36. So our probability is 36 out of 252. One-seventh chance that this happens. Suppose she has at most one green. At most one means we have zero or one. So we break it down. Uh, green. So we have three green, we want zero. And then there are seven others, we want five. Or, so plus, we have three green, we want one. And then out of the seven others, we want four to make our total of five. One times 21, one times 21, plus C of 3 comma 1 is 3. C of 7 comma 4 is 35. When I add 21 and 105, I get 126. So half of the time, half of the time we'll have at most one green. The other half of the time we'll have more than one green. Test example. A test has three parts. Part A consists of eight true-false questions. Part B consists of five multiple-choice questions with five choices each. And part C requires you to match five questions with five different answers one to one. Assuming that you make random guesses in filling out your answer sheet, not recommended people, what is the probability that you will earn 100% on the test? So a test has three parts. It doesn't give you options. You have to do each part. Part, eight consists, part A excuse me, consists of eight true-false questions. So really what's going on here is for the first question, two possibilities. Second question, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Those are all twos, though they don't all look like them. Um, because you have either true or false, two options at each stage, and you have eight stages, we write it in terms of an exponential, two to the eighth for our true false. Part B consists of five multiple choice questions with five choices each. It's always choices, at each stage to the number of questions. Yep, that says questions, I know. You probably can't read it, but trust me. Part C requires you to match five questions with five different answers one to one. So if I have five and uh, I'm, I have five options, all right? So five options for the first one, but I've used one of them. So four options for the second question, three, two, and one. We're going to multiply those all together, and that's how we get the five factorial. Let's put this all together. There's only one perfect score, right? One 100%. So we have one in the numerator. The de denominator is the product because it's a sequence of choices. Two to the eighth times five to the fifth times five factorial 
Yes, 96 million. Even a simple test that only has eight true faults and five multiple choice and five matching, you have a one in 96 million chance of getting 100%. Good luck. If you could do that, man, you should go to Vegas or Atlantic City or Morocco or wherever you happen to be. The random example lottery requires you to select a sequence of three different numbers, 0 through 49. Order is important, a sequence. You're a winner if your sequence agrees with that in the drawing, and you're a booby prize winner if your selection of numbers is correct, but in the wrong order. What's the probability of being a winner? What's the probability of being a booby prize winner? What's the probability that you are either a winner or a booby prize winner? All right, so you choose three different numbers, 0 through 49. 1 through 49 is 49 numbers. You throw in 0, we have 50 of them. So order is important. We'll use permutations. We have 50 numbers. We want to choose 3. There are 117,600 different possibilities. Remember, order matters. So we use permutations and not combinations. You're a winner if your sequence agrees with that in the drawing. So the probability of being a winner, there's only one way. Out of 117,600, uh, the decimals, and rather than using commas to the right of the decimal, we sometimes put a little space in to keep track of where we are. Uh, this probability is not bloody likely. You're probably not going to win this. But people are still going to play. Uh, you're a booby prize winner if your selection of numbers is correct, but in the wrong order. So now order doesn't matter. So we could use combinations. The combinations of the 50 numbers that we have, 0 through 49, we want three of them. Now there's only 19,600 different ways that can happen. And so we have a 1 out of 19,600. It's better, but not a lot. I still wouldn't play this one. Uh, what's the probability that you are neither a winner nor a booby prize winner, which could be different from what the original question said, but we're going to go with this since it's posted here. The probability you are a winner or booby prize winner, I can add my fractions. So the probability that you are neither a winner nor a booby prize winner, there should be an N there for nor, one minus. So 99.99% uh, .99 of the time you are not going to win the random lottery example. But, you know, there's always that itty-bitty little small chance. And sometimes, if you have the money to spend, it's worth it. That's it for now. Thank you for listening.